In this video, I'm going to show you how to build the super simple code practice oscillator kit. The supplies you'll need to build this kit are a Phillips head screwdriver, a pair of diagonal cutters, a soldering iron and some solder, a sandpaper or emery board, and a 9 volt battery. The first thing to do is to take some inventory. Starting off with the electronic components, we should find two capacitors with a marking 104 and that's these two components here. Two 15k ohm resistors and they will have a brown, green, orange and gold band uh, just like these. The next are two 470 ohm resistors and they'll have a marking with yellow, violet, brown and gold band like these two right here. And the two transistors, these are the metal cans with three leads. Next, make sure you've got all of the hardware. You should have a pair of 632 by 3 8 screws four 632 by one quarter inch screws, one 832 by three eighths inch screw, just slightly larger in diameter than the uh, number six screws here. You should have six hex nuts, two spacers, the male and female nine volt battery clips, and the plastic knob. And finally, make sure you've got the eight ohm speaker, the stick on rubber feet, and the printed circuit board. The first step is to break off the piece of the circuit board that becomes the Morse code key and that's just grooved to makes it very easy to snap off. After you've separated the circuit board some of these edges might be sharp so you can take your sandpaper and smooth those edges if necessary. The first step is to install the speaker and we start by putting four screws through the component side of the board uh, surrounding the speaker. Then carefully place your hand across those screws so they don't fall out and flip the board over. And then place the speaker in the middle of the four screws with the terminals facing the solder pads on the board. And take four of the hex nuts and start them on each of those screws until they're just touching the speaker. You can then put your hand over those four nuts, flip the board back over, and use the Phillips head screwdriver to snug up the screws. And just a quick tip here, don't make the screws too tight because you don't want to bend the speaker. Now before we start doing some soldering, uh, some words of caution. The soldering iron gets very, very hot, hot enough to melt metal. So do not touch any of the metal portions of the soldering iron once it's plugged in. And follow the instructions carefully when doing soldering so that you don't burn yourself. So periodically while you're soldering it's a good idea to put a little solder on the tip of the iron and then to wipe it off either on the solder tip cleaner or the wet sponge that is provided. This keeps the tip clean and ensures good solder connections. We're going to start with the battery terminals. So hold the battery like this so that the positive terminal is facing away from you and attach the two solder terminals to the top of the battery and we'll use the battery to actually hold them in place while soldering them on the board. Now making sure that the battery positive terminal is going into the positive set of holes on the board, uh, insert the uh, battery terminals through the board and flip the board over to get ready to solder. Now the proper technique for soldering is to bring the soldering iron down so it's touching both the board and the terminal that you're looking to solder. Let that heat up a little bit and then apply the solder to the opposite side. When everything is heated up it will melt and flow evenly around the lead and the terminal itself. And again, be sure not to touch it because it's going to get very hot. Repeat this for all six terminals sticking through the board. When done properly, each of those solder joints should be smooth and shiny all the way around. If it looks dull or pitted, then it's what we call a cold solder joint and should be reheated with a little extra solder uh, until they're nice and smooth. Once you're finished soldering the 9 volt battery clip joints, you can turn the board over and pull the 9 volt battery off for now and set it aside. And the next step is to locate the two 15k ohm resistors. These are the ones that have a brown, green, and orange marking with a gold band on the end. And for each of those resistors, we'll take and bend the leads at a 90 degree angle. And then we can insert them into their locations on the board. You'll see a marking for 15k and 15k. So insert both of them into the board now. When they're properly inserted in the board, they should sit nice and flush. And then with your finger on the part, you could turn it over and slightly spread the leads out on the bottom 
so that the part doesn't fall out when you turn the board over for soldering. And then we'll solder these four leads just like we did for the battery clips. With all four leads soldered, it's time to clip off the extra lead length. Uh, let the leads cool for a few seconds and then bring your diagonal clippers in and clip off each of the leads. Now hold on to the wires so they don't go flying, uh, plus we're going to need to use a few of these later on. So it's a good idea just to clip them all off, keep them in your fingers, and throw, put them in a pile on the desk uh, for use later on. Okay, so the 15K resistors are installed and soldered, and we've clipped the leads off. We're going to repeat the same process with the two 470 ohm resistors and the 0.1 microfarad or 104 capacitors. The 470 ohm resistors are the ones with the yellow, violet, brown, gold bands. And we'll insert them in the board in the 470 ohm resistor locations. And we'll solder them in place. And trim off each of the leads. Follow the same process for the two capacitors. Okay, the resistors and capacitors are now done. Next we're going to start with the two metal can transistors. They're labeled 2N2222A. Now you'll notice these transistors, they have three legs, and there's a small tab on one portion of the can. So with the tab facing up, we'll install the three leads of the transistor and slide it down so that it's not quite touching the board, spaced up by about a sixteenth of an inch or so, like I've shown here. Install the second transistor the same way, spaced up by about the same amount, and then you can flip the board over and solder all six of those legs. Okay, next, take the 832 by 3 8 inch screw, stick it through the large hole at the end of this board with the silver side up, uh, turn it over and attach the plastic knob. I'm going to take the last two screws and insert them through uh, the end of the keyboard here and uh, throw them the red side over, flip it over, and slip the two spacers on top of those screws. Then take your board and position it over those two screws and then we'll put the nuts on the other end. Now the final electrical connections we need to make are to solder the terminals of the speaker to these terminals on the board. And this is where we're going to use two of the spare leads that we clipped off earlier. I'll start by just putting a little solder on these blank pads on the mounting points. But let's make it easier when we go to solder the waters, wires on later. Now using your diagonal cutters very lightly or a pair of needle nose pliers, you can hold onto that wire, position it over the pad, and melt the solder to attach it. Then repeat this for the other terminal. And we just want to position these wires so they go over the metal pads that are on the board. And then use the cutters to cut off the uh, wire uh, about in the middle of the pad on both of them. You can then push the wires down until they touch the board and then solder them. Okay, almost done. We simply take the uh, four adhesive uh, rubber feet and stick them to the four corners of the board. Right, flip the board over, uh, slide on your 9 volt battery, and lo and behold, you've made yourself a super simple uh, Morse code practice oscillator. Congratulations.